Yes. So uh, I'm going to present uh, the paper uh, more scalable order set for X using adaptation. The work that I've done together with uh, Kostis Saganos, my name is Chef, as you see. And uh, I will structure this uh, talk by first uh, giving some context why we need more scalable order set for X. And then I will uh, present our solution and uh, some results that we obtained using this solution. <coughs> so first of all, uh, X stands for Erlang Term Storage. It's a key value store for in-memory database, but it can also be seen as a way to, uh, to provide uh, shared memory for Erlang processors. And you create an X table with this X new function that takes uh, several parameters. Here we use set to specify that we want to set table type. It's uh, uh, based on a hash table. <coughs> and uh, if we uh, activate this write concurrency op option, we will uh, have the fine grain locking in this table so we can have some uh, parallelism for the operations that access the, the table. And the public here means that uh, it will be shared, that many processors can access it. And uh, here we create uh, uh, an other table of the type ordered set. And the difference between set and ordered set is that the ordered set, uh, the, the elements in the table are ordered in the key order, so you can traverse it in this order. And it's uh, currently implemented as a binary search tree, an uh, AVA tree to be more specific. And uh, this doesn't uh, uh, support uh, fine grained docking. It's uh, currently protected by a single reader writer slot. Uh, but you can specify this read concurrency option, which will uh, activate a special reader writer slot that is optimized for uh, frequent read operations. And what it, this does is that uh, it uh, divides the reader indicator that the readers use to indicate that they are reading to several cache lines. So they don't, uh, inter uh, readers don't interfere with each other. And uh, you can insert uh, early couples into the table like this. And you can lo look at them using a key. And uh, you can use uh, this first function to get the first element in a table, and then the uh, next function to traverse the rest of the table. But uh, this is just a few of the functions that X uh, API provides. There are many more, for example, delete, uh, match, <coughs> matches uh, all elements that uh, has a certain pattern, and uh, full left, left, etc. And uh, how does uh, X currently scale? We will use a benchmark from the Bench Earl benchmark suite to investigate this. It's called X Bench. This benchmark has uh, three phases. <coughs> the first is the uh, insert phase that inserts a number of uh, random elements to a table and uh, time this. And then there is an update phase uh, that uh, where we have equal amount of uh, delete and uh, insert operations and the percentage of uh, uh, lookup operations as well. And then finally we have a delete uh, phase that we will not uh, uh, use today. The machine we use for the benchmark has uh, uh, four chips, so it's a NUMA uh, machine. Uh, chips have eight cores each with a uh, hyper-threading. And uh, uh, in the graphs you will see, so we uh, are pinning uh, threads or processes. So uh, first, the, the, the first the threads are pinned to the first chip. So the first 16 threads you see in the graphs use only one of these four chips, and then they go on to use two, etc. So we start to look at the 100% update case. And here we have ordered set with and without read concurrency activated, and set with and without read concurrency activated. 
and then uh, we show throughput here on the y y axis uh, operations per microsecond, and then you have the number of threads here or Erlang processes, and uh, as you can see, uh, this uh, doesn't scale at all. And uh, here we add uh, set with the uh, the fine grain locking activated and it's much better but then here uh, we, we are still using one NEMA node but when we use uh, more than one NEMA node the performance get, uh, get worse and uh, if you also activate the uh, read concurrency uh, on the uh, set table this yellow line it doesn't make much difference in this case and then we go on to look at the 100% lookup case, board set without any concurrency option, doesn't scale well. But then when we add uh, read concurrency, the frequent read optimized uh, reader write is up, it gets much better. And the uh, set uh, without it is still not good, and with the read concurrency activated, it also gets uh, better. And the uh, set with write concurrency, fine grain locking. It's not as good as uh, uh, the read concurrency only. And then when we activate both, it's, it's still similar. We, we haven't uh, figured out yet uh, why it's not better in this case when you have both uh, read concurrency and write concurrency activated. Uh, and we look at the mixed case with 50% reads and the rest update operations. Uh, and you, as you see here, everything that doesn't have fine grain locking doesn't scale at all. But when we have fine grain locking, it's a little bit better. Or much better, I would say. And we, we add uh, more read operations, so we have 99% uh, reads and only 1% uh, uh, updates. And still, uh, it doesn't scale at all. We even have like slow down here when we use uh, many threads. We all these uh, alternatives when we don't have fine grain locking, but uh, using fine grain locking, it's it's much better. So uh, to summarize what we just have seen, uh, the main thing for this paper is that we think we need to do something about ordered set when we have parallel writes, because as you saw. Even the scenario with uh, uh, so much as 99% reads doesn't scale at all. So uh, we want to order set with good scalability. If possible, we want to reduce code from the current order set implementation. So we don't need to re-implement everything in this uh, rich API. And uh, uh, if possible, we want to have low uh, overhead in the sequential case. Uh, because we don't want to make current applications slower. And the current uh, uh, algorithms for concurrent ordered sets, they usually trade off uh, uh, memory cons consumption in the sequential case and sequential performance for better scalability. So we, we have come up with a new data structure that we call contention up adapting binary search tree or CA3 for short. And it's uh, yeah, a binary a concurrent binary search tree, as the name indicates. The key ideas with this is that uh, we start with one lock protecting a sequential uh, <coughs> binary search tree, and then we collect statistics from this lock. And when the statistics indicate that the contention is high, we adapt to this situation. And uh, so first we need a component uh, that we call a statistics collecting lock. And this can easily be constructing by having a normal mutex lock that you associate a, a statistics counter with. When you need to wait to acquire this lock, you increase the statistics counter. Otherwise, you uh, decrease it. And then you have some thresholds. Uh, so but when the counter reads this threshold, you do adoption according to this situation. The second uh, component is a sequential order set data structure. 
And what we require for this is that uh, it provide a split and a join operation. The split operation uh, takes a sequential data structure and split it in two so that uh, the largest uh, key in one of the resulting uh, structures is uh, uh, smaller than the smallest key in the other. And uh, the join operation is essentially reverse of that, so it uh, takes two sequential data structures and merges them together. And this uh, uh, many sequential order set data structure provides these operations in all the log n time, for example, ABL trees, red black trees, and trees. And uh, uh, this figure shows uh, the structure of a CA tree. Uh, we have one layer with routing nodes that uh, divide the keys between sequential data structures that uh, are protected with something that we call base nodes here. Uh, and then the, there is a lock here in the routing node and some, some flags. I will not go into detail <coughs> what they are from, but you can read in a technical report uh, uh, that we have online exactly how this works. But I, I will walk, uh, walk you through uh, animation that show roughly how this structure is created. So we, we create, we start uh, with a CA tree that just consists of uh, uh, one base node containing the statistics collecting lock and a sequential data structure here. And then we have uh, uh, many parallel threads accessing this. So it gets conten contention. And then uh, the high contention threshold is, is reached and we do a split. <coughs> So we replace this uh, base node with uh, two base nodes that are linked together with a routing node like this. And then uh, contention is still high, so this process is uh, uh, continuous <coughs> until we have this structure. And then uh, the, <coughs> the process, uh, their operations are divided by this uh, between these base nodes, so the contention is not so high anymore. And the uh, low contention threshold is reached. And then uh, it here in these uh, base nodes, and then th they are merged uh, like this. So we, we put two sequential data structures uh, together. And as you can see here, uh, this process creates some REST pr products uh, when we do split and and join, and this is because uh, uh, other threads can uh, be reading this when we want to free it, so we can't uh, free them directly. So we have to have some delayed uh, reclamation management for this, but uh, eventually they will also be freed, so they get removed. And, yeah. So this is the CRG, and uh, how do we integrate this uh, into X? Uh, in fact, we can reuse uh, a lot of the code for the current order set implementation. We use the AVL tree code there. And uh, uh, the routing layer, as I mentioned, it needs some uh, special treatment. And uh, currently we use uh, something called Quizen State based reclamation to deal with the uh, routing nodes. Uh, but it would be better to use the uh, memory reclamation system for log-free data structures that already is already integrated into the Erlang runtime system. So uh, now I'll show some performance results for, for this. And we use the same benchmark as I showed you before. And again we start with 100% updates. And now, if we compare like our new order set implementation, the green line, with the old one, the blue line, we see that there is a substantial improvement. And uh, the red line is the uh, set. Of course, we read and write from the <coughs> activated. And uh, we are actually much better even than that one on, uh, when we use several liminals after 16 threads here. 
and the 100% look at the case. There, the old uh, solution is very good with a frequent read, optimized uh, read writer writer slot. Uh, but uh, our new solution is still similar to the uh, set implementation with the write concurrency and read and write and uh, frequent read optimized uh, read and writer slot. So, and now we look at the mixed scenarios. So there are 50% looks up lookups and the rest <laughs> updates and it's still the same pattern as the 100% uh, update scenario <coughs> and uh, we add even more lookups 80% and uh, yeah, the difference between uh, the current uh, uh, set and uh, our new ordered set is even bigger here on the, in the NIMA system and uh, here is the scenario where we have uh, as much as 99% lookups and uh, uh, the current order is set so yeah, there is a substantial improvement here we, we can summarize this uh, results can I ask a question? sure I'm surprised that the normal sets did so bad can you explain why they uh, didn't scale? Uh, here you mean yeah, and in the previous picture also. yes uh, there are several reasons, but uh, the main reason, uh, I think, is that uh, it has some uh, some uh, counters that it uses, so, like number of buckets. It's a linear hash table, so it uh, expands and uh, decreases uh, its, its number of buckets quite frequently, and it uses a counter that is uh, updated with atomic operations, and this become a uh, yeah, sequential bottleneck and on NUMA system where it's very expensive to communicate between uh, NUMA nodes this has a huge effect you mean that it's changing the hash size? exactly, exactly. <coughs> and it also has other counters like for the number of uh, but that's a poor elements in the table of, also. that's just a poor implementation of hashes then. true, true yes. because they should do better, right? Yeah, I, I think we can improve this, definitely. It's an example of what I was saying in my talk about um, people using the wrong abstractions <laughs> and about shared memory not being a good abstraction. Okay. Yeah, so we, we go on. Um, and I think I, I said everything that I wanted to say on this slide. And we looked a little bit about the sequential performance. And the important things to look uh, at here is uh, the red uh, bar, the previous order set, and our new uh, AVL CFE based order set. And we see that there is a small uh, overhead for the uh, CFE implementation. And uh, here we have set size, of course, in the x axis, and the uh, execution time here on the y axis. And uh, yeah, we, we think we can. Uh, uh, decrease this overhead because in our experimental implementation we have some some operations that we can like we can reduce something that is already existing uh, in the X uh, system uh, to to decrease the overhead. So uh, uh, future work to integrate uh, this into X. Uh, we need to implement the whole uh, X interface, of course. Currently, we just uh, have support for uh, the insert, delete, and lookup functions. But we think this will be uh, yeah, a relatively easy task because we can reuse uh, a lot of the code from the current uh, order and set available tree based implementation. And uh, we also have to uh, decide how we should integrate this into X if it's going to be included in an ofi official OTP release. And one way is to always activate it when we have public tables. Uh, but then, as we saw, we will have a little bit worse performance in the read-only case. So a better strategy maybe is to activate it when we have the write concurrency option specified. Uh, we have uh, done some work already since we published 
this or submitted this paper. They have compared the CA3 to some other uh, concurrent order set data structures. And they have uh, investigated optimizations for the frequent read case. They have used uh, uh, reader writer locks, sequence locks, and hardware lock addition enabled locks in the base nodes. And uh, they have also discussed the algorithm in uh, detail and yeah, presented exactly how it works. And this you can find in a technical report that we have available online. So, uh, conclusion. We have shown that uh, the performance of uh, concurrent writes on order, order set can be substantially improved in X. And uh, we have also shown that CA3 based uh, uh, table uh, scale better than the current hash based implementation on NEMA system. And uh, uh, yeah, we have good scalability and low contentional sequential overhead. And uh, now it's time for questions. Yes. What will you do to get past the, the bump or the lack of scaling after the first call? Oh, most of the graphs after the first chip, you mean? After the first chip, then it, everything's dandy, and then nothing. So, so what what's missing to get some scalability after that point? Uh, yeah, that's a very good uh, question. Uh, yeah, so the, the current S implementation, as I said, has some like sequential bottlenecks that become important on the neural system. It has. Uh, <coughs> uh, yeah, one thing that I think we could easily get rid of is the like, memory reclamation system. It ke keeps track of how much memory X is using, and it uses a, a centralized counter for, for this. And uh, this becomes uh, can become a bottleneck. And, uh, I don't think we need that uh, accurate uh, statistics about how much memory X is using. So this could easily be divided in, into one uh, counter per scheduler, for example. Uh, yeah, and uh, in the read-only case, we, we, uh, in the CA3 we are using mutex locks. Uh, in this uh, benchmark you, you should saw here, and uh, uh, this can also be a problem on, on NUMA because it's even if you have uh, read operations, it needs to take this mutex uh, lock, which uh, includes some write uh, instruction. And then uh, you modify memory and uh, other press need to read this again and so on. So this can be a problem. So using uh, read the writer logs and so on can can give better uh, performance on memo. Yes. So you use some particular heuristics for deciding when you uh, let this two fifty that you add when you can't get the lock and the minus one that you take away yeah. if you don't need it. Yeah, so, so, so what, what uh, sorry. Uh, so, uh, the, the, these uh, heuristics, uh, I'd like to know kind of how you came up with them. Um, and clearly they work well on, on a, this particular NUMA architecture, but maybe you need different heuristics for other um, architectures and sh should there be some way of, of uh, should these be parametric should there be some way of setting them for, for some specific uh, architecture uh, yeah so the way we come up with this is that like, we have the threshold 1000 for high contention adoption and minus 1000 for low contention adoption and the other uh, reason we had was that if we have contention we want to adapt fast uh, so that we add 250 uh, when it's contended and just subtract the minus one when it's not it means that <coughs> it, it requires just a few contended uh, op operations to cause a split but many operations uh, uncontended operations to cause a merge uh, because we think it's important to adapt fast, f fast when we have uh, uh, contention to allow some parallelism, but then when it's low contention, it's not as uh, important uh, because uh, 
yeah, it just means that the threads have to traverse an extra routing node in the tree. So that, that's the reasoning where, when they come up with this heuristics. Uh, and uh, like uh, maybe for some other system you need other heuristics, but uh, uh, from our experiments it seems so. These values seem to work pretty well on many systems, but uh, like if you change them a little, you can get yeah a little bit different numbers because uh, uh, th they also decide like how deep the routing layer will be. So, but, but uh, our experiments show that this number seems to work well on, on several computers. So you think they're basically stable? Sorry, <laughs> they're basically stable. They, they'll work for a number of different architectures. Yeah. Yes. So one way of looking at what you do is that when you observe contention at uh, a node, a root node, or one node down, mm -hmm. then uh, you convert that node into a routing node. Right? Exactly. And then you push the value down. Exactly. So you're, you're kind of freezing that part of the structure. Tree. And one consequence is that you're freezing the value that you're going to route on. Now, normally in an ADL tree, if you insert a lot of data into the right subtree, mm. then balancing the tree is going to replace the value of the root. But you're, you're freezing that. So I have two questions about that. Uh, one question is whether you observe a um, uh, performance problem caused by uh, restricting the balancing that can be applied. Mm. And that might be a disadvantage. The other question is, given that the routing structure is going to remain fixed for long periods, have you thought about replicating that on each of your chips so that uh, you at least don't need to access middle memory while you're navigating through the routing structure? And that might be a benefit to it. Uh, okay. Uh, the, the, the first <coughs> question is about uh, balancing. And uh, yeah, so, so the. The routing layer, essentially, the structure of this will depend of, on how the contention pattern is. So if the contention is very high on some part of the tree, this will be, have quite deep uh, routing la layer. Uh, so you, you can see this as a, that it like dynamically optimizes itself to the situation. And we haven't observed any like problem that it, like the tree becomes too deep or something like this. So in, in practice, I don't think it's any problem. But if you are afraid of this, you, you can always uh, uh, bound uh, like how deep it can be. So you never you never expand if it's like more than a certain depth. Uh, and uh, yeah, the second uh, question was about the rec uh, replication of the tree to different neural nodes. And as you said, the routing layer will be relatively stable. And uh, uh, Therefore, uh, the threads running on different NUMA nodes, they will probably have the node already in their local cache. So, so the, the system takes care of this replication to some degree as well. So, so uh, yeah, I, I don't think you need to, to manually do this. Although, when you uh, access a node through the routing layer, yeah. then are you not going to be adjusting the counters associated with each lock? Then you're going to be writing to that memory. Yeah, that's that true. Would be a problem. That's true. So yeah, you, you can read our technical report. We have some some solutions for this in the like read operations. Don't <coughs> yeah. Okay. Um, there was one I, uh, so yeah, I think we're I think we're out of time, so thank you.